I spent the last 3 months and $2,017.27 visiting the best steakhouses in Singapore. And these are the ratings that I gave. One steak stands for I will walk for the steak, two steaks I will take a bus for the steak, and three steaks I will go anywhere in Singapore for the steaks. But these ratings aren't very fair because I have changed over time after eating so many steaks. So our first order of business today is some moderation. Firstly, and this has been on my mind for quite a while, Bisteka deserves the three steaks. Comparing every steakhouse against it at its price point and quality, it is an outstanding steakhouse. Secondly, after a lot of soul searching, I realized I really don't like grey crust. As such, I'm taking away one steak from Picanhas and Bison. Both places definitely have their merits, but grey crust really rubbed me the wrong way. And seeing how this is my rating, that's what I'm gonna do. Lastly, the biggest factor that I have struggled with all week long is price point. I keep asking myself if I'm gonna drop X amount of money, wouldn't I go with this place instead? Thus, I have decided that one free sticks place doesn't really belong in that tier. And that is Bedrock Bar and Grill. Don't get me wrong, it's still a really, really nice steakhouse, but it's kinda expensive. I asked myself, Will I really go to anywhere in Singapore for it? And the answer was no. And there we have it. I stayed at this tier list for very long this week and I'm happy with it. Moving on, here are the awards that we are giving out today. Each award will have three nominees and one winner. Let's begin with what is on the outside, the crust of the steak. The nominees for best crust are Rubicon with the thinnest crispy crust on its Hokkaido steak, Wolfgang Steakhouse with a solid crispy crust on its 60 days dry aged USDA prime ribeye. And I sticks with its Steakhouse Char 450 gram pasture fat ribeye. And the winner is. Wolfgang Steakhouse. I have come to realize that I really like a crispy exterior. And I must tell you that some people don't like it, like Guga. But I have tried a lot of steaks in the past 3 months, and this is what I like. Next, we are talking about the most juicy steak. The nominees for best juiciness are Wulu Mulu with its wet aged USDA Prime Cajun Spice Ribeye, Bedrock Bar and Grill with its Bedrock Pepper Steak, and Rubicon with the Hokkaido Ribeye. And the winner is. Wulu Mulu. I have had plenty of juicy steaks, but Wulu Mulu's one was incredible. Impossible, even. I still recall the feeling of having to swallow the juices because I couldn't chew anymore without it spilling out. Now, at the start of the series, I said that I wouldn't let any free gifts affect the rating of the steakhouses, but I think that's the wrong way to go about it. It is not uncommon to receive free stuff, compliments of the chef at a steakhouse. Such freebies are already included in the overcharge that is the steakhouse tax. So the next award goes to the steakhouse with the best peripherals. Define as the things that you get that you didn't pay for. The nominees are Wulu Mulu with a whole loaf of bread, butter, and a range of very delicious sauces. Bisteka with its focaccia, tomato dip, and steak sauces, one of which is the very delicious balsamic vinegar. And Cut with its incredible bread basket, gurgir, range of mustard, and miniadis. And the winner is. Cut by Wolfgang Park. Truly a killer bread basket. I regret that I didn't elaborate on the black garlic beef fat butter during the episode itself. That was perhaps one of the most delicious garlic butter combinations that I have ever had. But Eldrick, where would you recommend? I'm gonna get this question a lot now and I realize it's not good enough to give you guys entertainment and culinary knowledge via my videos. It has to be actionable intel. So the next two awards are basically recommendations. Starting with the best place to bring your date. The nominees are Bisteka Tuscan Steakhouse, Keith the Beef, and Cut by Wolfgang Park. And the best place to bring your date is... Cut by Wolfgang Park. The vibes, the service is impeccable. If you ever need a place to really impress someone, might not even be a romantic date, but let's say a prospect or client, I think the food and service at Cut will really help you out. But what about the boys? What if you're not so much into impressing? What if you just want a nice place to chill with the boys, eat a good amount of steak in a casual, fast-free way? The top three places for the boys are Rubicon Steakhouse, 
Bisteka Tuscan Steakhouse and Keith the Beef. The best place for the boys in my opinion is Rubicon Steakhouse. Great value, high quality steak available with beer and sake. And if you have a group, you can occupy one of the tables towards the back and actually use the small space to your advantage since you guys will take up about half the restaurant already. All right, all right, let's get down to the serious awards. Steaks are very expensive and we will always be on the lookout for the value buy. Yeah, premium steaks are great, but sometimes I want something cheap, fast and filling to get my steak fix. These are the top 3 steaks with the best value. Bison Okayama Wagyu Steakhouse, Ice Steaks and Rubicon Steakhouse. Winner of the best value steak goes to... Ice Steaks. 450 gram, two sides at 4250 is just ridiculous. Below $50. Yeah, it's not the best meat, but it really doesn't get any better than that. I have to mention that Rubicon Steakhouse had a real case as well. 500 gram of top quality meat at 132 is really, really strong. But what if we don't talk about money for a second? What if we want the best tasting steak, no matter the cost? These are the top 3 best tasting steaks that I've come across. Keith the Beef's The PL, Rubicon Steakhouse Hokkaido Wagyu, and Katz Sendai Pure Breed Wagyu Ribeye. The steakhouse with the best tasting steak is... Keith the Beef. I really like the flavour that they were able to convey despite going for a cheaper cut. I love how rough they were with the meat, going with a butter-based sauce marination, really burning the crust, serving the steak with beef drew, and that all comes together to give a flavour explosion. A very bold way to cook steaks, the boldest in the series. And now, the question that I spent one quarter of the year researching, a question that cost me more than $2,000. Eldrick, which is the best steakhouse in Singapore? Let me preface this by saying that this answer is completely subjective. It takes into account everything I've experienced and everything I have learned to prefer. You are most welcome to disagree. But at the end of the series, these are the top 3 steakhouses that I look forward to returning most. Bisteka Tuscan Steakhouse The Florentine steak is a delicious cut to share and F1 Kuroge Washu over embers at this price is really decent. Place is comfortable with ample spacing across tables. Uh, friends, my birthday is in August. Cut by Wolfgang Park. Yes, there are a whole bunch of taxes, but they are there for a reason. Impeccable service and attention to detail. And what's more, my review hasn't even scratched the surface of what they have to offer. I have heard that their sides game is crazy. Lastly, Rubicon Steakhouse. Top quality steak and an incredible price point. I want to go there and order everything on the menu. It sounds crazy, but if you go for the 1kg steak options and share it with friends, it actually divides down to be very reasonable, perhaps even unreasonable. Winner of the best steakhouse in Singapore goes to... Cut by Wolfgang Park. Perfect, top quality produce, expert handling. Giving the Sendai Wagyu the Binchotan kiss, but not too much such that it hinders the sweet meat flavour. Absolutely perfect. They complete the package with a well-trained team, well-furnished interior, and wonderful peripherals. Of course, they are very expensive. And if they weren't as good as they were, I probably would have gone off on them. But the truth of the matter is, or at least it is in my opinion, that they are the best. And that's it, we're done, we're done. Woo! Thank you to all of you for watching, all the recommendations, all the positive and negative comments. I cannot wait to begin on the next series. Which, if there's any dish that you want the next series to be on, please leave a comment down below. Next week, we're gonna cook some steaks of our own to really bring home what we have learned. Are dry aged steaks supposed to be less juicy? How does a picanha steak feel? And how much money will you save if you cook your own steak at home? We answer all of that in the next video. Once again, thank you for watching. Hit the like for the $2,000 that I spent. Subscribe if you haven't already and click on the bell so that you don't miss a single upload. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.